Hello, and welcome to Wise Guy Reviews. Today I'm reviewing one of my favorite um, authors and poets. I'm not necessarily going to be talking about a particular book, um, rather an entire artist and uh, his work. And that author is going to be Clark Ashton Smith. So for those of you who are unaware or new to the uh, weird fiction genre or do not know about the Weird Tales circle, which um, consists of people who wrote for the Weird Tales magazine back in the uh, 20s and 30s. Essentially, Smith was one of the big three. But first of all, I want to go through a little bit of biographical information on him. Smith was an author, a poet, and also an artist. So he was born 1893, passed away 1961. And uh, he was born and raised in Auburn, and I believe he spent most of his life there, if not all of it. Now, the whole reason why I'm even making this video is due to the fact that I don't believe that Smith has received a lot of the recognition that uh, I truly feel that he deserves. Some of you may be aware of Smith, but I do feel like he is one of the authors that just doesn't receive a lot of recognition and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that unfortunately there just aren't a lot of people talking about it. So today I plan on giving you information both on him and his work. Now even though Smith is somewhat under the radar nowadays. When he was a teenager, he actually received a good deal of local publicity over one of the poems that he wrote called The Star Treader. I believe it was that individual poem um, along with an actual volume of poetry that he published. And again, this was in his teens. Unfortunately, the uh, publicity that he got from his poems at an early age did not last and he went under the radar for quite a while. The rumor has it that on his first day of high school, he went absolutely hated it, came back and he told his parents that he was never going to go back. And so they shrugged their shoulders and said, all right, but you're going to go to the library every day. So that's what he did. He read every book in the library, including the dictionary from cover to cover. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in his life from when he was a teen to when he was a young adult. Smith, as well as Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard, were considered the big three of a pulp magazine called Weird Tales. So for those of you who are a little too young or may just not be aware, Weird Tales was a pulp magazine that was created I believe in 1922 and continued all the way through I believe the 50s. However, it was most popular during the 20s and 30s and that was the time where H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, and of course Clark Ashton Smith were all writing for this magazine. So obviously all three of these writers were highly skilled and today are recognized for their contributions to weird fiction as well as fantasy and also their unique writing styles. Lovecraft is largely remembered due to his grotesque creatures that he created as well as the cosmic horror that he included in a lot of his stories. The Call of Cthulhu, Dagon, and The Color Out of Space are all really good examples of this. While Howard, on the other hand, focused more on creating these heroic characters and these grand adventures in which they would go on. You have Conan the Sumerian, you have Cole, you have Solomon Kane. These are characters that are still well known and prevalent today. Now Smith's specialty, I would argue, was his ability to create worlds rich with atmosphere and vivid imagery. Now granted, Lovecraft and Howard were both capable of this as well. However, I do believe that Smith is a true master of his craft. And his craft is not only writing a story, but creating a world that one can get truly lost in. At least that's my opinion anyways. And even when all the authors were alive and writing at the same time, there was no ill will between any of them. All of them were in fact good friends and they shared correspondence with each other regularly. Smith and Lovecraft, even though they had never met, it is plain to see through the correspondence that they had with each other what respect they had for one another, both as writers and men. So that basically ends the biography and history lesson that I had for you. So now I'm basically going to talk to you about my own personal thoughts and feelings on Smith and his writing. So I discovered Smith, I'd say probably my senior year of high school. I was a junior when I discovered Lovecraft, and I know it was about a year after because I discovered Lovecraft and I began looking into the Weird Tales circle. I learned about Derelith, Juan Dry, obviously Robert E. Howard, and Smith continued to pop up. Clark Ashton Smith. I never heard of him, knew nothing about him. 
So I Googled him, and uh, I got the Wikipedia page saying he was an author, a poet, and artist. So I looked up some of his poetry, and I thought it was beautiful. I liked that it was written in the romantic fashion. It was that, but mixed with a cosmic admiration, or at the very least fascination, that I found very interesting. So I read several of his poems, and I thought, you know what, this guy is really good. I'd like to get one of his books. So I went to Barnes & Noble, and I picked up this right here. This is Clark Ashton Smith, The Dark Edelon, and Other Fantasies. This is probably going to be your most accessible volume of Smith to get. Uh, not the only volume. There are several volumes out there, which I will be talking to you about at the end of this video. So for those of you who don't know anything about this book, essentially it contains some of his short stories, prose poetry, and poetry. But anyways, I picked this up, and I got to the short stories, which is the very first section of this book. And I looked at the very first page, and I tried to read it, and I couldn't. I absolutely hated Smith's fiction. I did hate his fiction. Not anymore. Now, when I picked this book up, I was not a very avid reader. I read some of Poe, and I read some of Lovecraft. So that was about it. And most of Lovecraft that I read was more of his horror stuff, not necessarily any of his fantasy or dream cycle. I was very new to fantasy, and his very first story, the tale of Satampra Zeros, it's a fantasy story. There are elements of horror, especially towards the end, but it's fantasy, so it is Smith talking about this imaginary world that he created, and it was hard for me to understand at the time. So whether it was the fact that I had never read fantasy before, or that my mind had not fully really matured, or perhaps it was just due to the fact that I was intimidated. Smith can be very intimidating, because the guy's vocabulary is far beyond the average human. I have yet to read Smith and not learn at least one new word. Whatever it may have been, I don't know. So I finally decided to not be intimidated anymore and I finally decided to open the book and start reading his fiction. I decided to read the story, The City of the Singing Flame, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was both beautiful and strange and that was exactly what I was looking for. It was that story that pushed me to read more of his stuff. After reading several Smith stories, I began to realize something. His fiction reads almost like poetry in the way that there's a sort of rhythm to it. And I believe that's at least partially due to the fact that he was writing poetry long before he wrote fiction. He was writing poetry ever since he was a young child and until the day he died. And he himself even considered himself a poet first and foremost. His prose is very beautiful. It can be complex and it can be a little verbose, but it is very beautiful and highly rewarding when you read it. So stories that I would recommend for uh, beginners, uh, The City of the Singing Flame is amazing and a great place to start. Also, it has a sequel beyond The Singing Flame, which I also highly recommend. There's also The Devotee of Evil, which is very Lovecraftian. And uh, finally, there's gonna be The Tale of Satan Zeros, and I highly recommend this one if you're just really wanting to become engrossed in one of Smith's worlds. The imagery that Smith is able to convey through his language is absolutely incredible. Honestly, I think it goes without saying that I absolutely recommend this author. Smith is a true master of his craft, while his work might be a little challenging for people who've never read him before, once you actually get into his work, it is highly rewarding. So other than the uh, Penguin Classics edition, you do have a few others. There's another one called the Clark Ashton Cycle. This is going to be a collection of his Cthulhu Mythos stories. So if uh, you're very interested in his contributions to the Cthulhu Mythos, you can check that book out. There is also a six-volume set if you are wanting all of this stuff as far as collected fantasies and his miscellaneous fiction. I will also be putting a picture of that right up here. This is a picture of my personal set. So the first five in this collection are his collected fantasies, which I believe 
has over 130 stories. I think it's 133. And in there you have a couple prose poems. You also have several alternate endings to several of his stories. So if you're really wanting to get as much Smith as you can, there's this as well. If any of you are interested in a biography about Smith, this is a biography that I read about a year ago on Smith and it's very interesting and very insightful so I do recommend that. I will do my best to leave a link down below. So before I leave you guys I would like to end on a quote that Smith actually said about his own writing and it reads, my own conscious ideal has been to delude the reader into accepting an impossibility or series of impossibilities by means of a sort of verbal black magic in the achievement of which I make use of prose rhythm, metaphor, simile, tone color, counterpoint, and other stylistic resources like a sort of incantation. I'd say that's pretty accurate, but hey, give them a read yourself. See if there's any magic there. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.